Hey, it's, it's Halloween. Halloween video? Halloween video, cool. Oh, perfect. Hunters have gathered from around the globe. Late last year, at the very tail end of the Marvel Cinematic Universe's divisive Phase 4, a so-called Marvel Studios special presentation was released on the streaming platform Disney+, Plus, named Werewolf by Night, adapting, obviously, the fairly obscure Marvel Comics character of the same name. The special was beloved composer Michael Giacchino's directorial debut, who also scored the piece, is almost exclusively in black and white, and introduced a whole new monstrous corner of Marvel's flagship franchise. But how good was it? How fresh was it? How one note was it? And how does it hold up one year on? Let's get into it. Werewolf by Night is, first and foremost, a good time. Spoilers, obviously. It's a short-ish, self-contained story set around a monster hunt memorial for the legendary Ulysses Bloodstone, which sees various hunter randos, Bloodstone family disappointment Elsa, and mysterious newcomer Jack come together in an attempt to win the family's powerful Bloodstone artifact. But all is not as it seems. After a bit of time in the creepy family estate's requisite deadly maze getting into scuffles, we discover Jack's here to help this off-screen beastie, and is, in fact, a little monstrous himself. Yes, Jack is Jack Russell, werewolf by night. His imperiled friend Ted is Man-Thing, and the danger now is from the Bloodstone Estate and all those other hunters. Turns out people are the real monsters after all. Elsa and Man-Thing meet. She's able to follow Jack's suggestion and keep things chill, but before long, our protagonists are captured. That Bloodstone is used to force Jack to transform, but instead of killing Elsa, the furry little fella manages to get out and start mauling his captors. And with a little help from his friends, Bloodstone's widow is beat, and as a little bonus, all that previous friendliness to the Beastie Boys paid off, and Elsa doesn't get savaged. The hunters are toast, the creatures are free, and amidst all this wreckage, a needle drops, our heroes breathe out, and colour finally sweeps in. This is all rather well-paced, it zips along nicely, but we also get a few relatively long, silent sections, stalking and brooding. Moments where Werewolf by Night holds its breath for lengths of time most MCU films proper would struggle to, and that story, while skeletal, holds up well enough on rewatch one year on. But the key here is style. It oozes style. The black and white colouring, self-consciously delighting in its own filmness, the jarring cuts, the morbid humour, and the practicality of it all, be it in the majority of the effects on display or the set design. That isn't to say the action's bad, or the characters are. They're not, at all. The fights feel high stakes and tactile, Elsa and Jack are robust performances given depth beyond their screen time, I particularly like the very sardonic energy Laura Donnelly's giving, but action and character aren't the primary draw here they often seem to be in this franchise. It's awesome to see Elsa black widow the other hunters, when our leads sit and bond over family trauma it hits, but none of this is why you're watching, or why you stay watching. Stay engaged. No, the real draw, the real strength here is that atmosphere, is that style. Not the choreography itself so much as what's being choreographed, limbs being severed, ears being bitten off. Werewolf by Night emerges as a thrilling, well-realized homage to the monster movies of yesteryear, a channeling of those now-dusty Universal films, and the enduring subculture which followed. The colorized version, released a week or two ago, pushes this sense of pastiche further still, aiming to evoke the lurid intensity of the mid-century Hammer horror pictures. Throughout Werewolf by Night, but perhaps most clearly in the animated taxidermy sequence near the special's open, the glee this project finds in that classic horror style is obvious and infectious. But is this enough? As I suggested above, for me, the characters work, feel deep enough for a 50 minuter Moments like their conversation in the crypt go a long way toward fleshing these sketches out. I understand. It must be complicated to grow up with his family. You have no idea about my family, none. I don't. But all families have something in common. They follow us. For good, for bad, they, they stay like they become an atmosphere. But it does seem I may be in the minority here. Critical responses to the special often criticise this very point, tend to assume this is Marvel half arsing characters that are to be picked up and developed later on. Consider this excerpt from SuperheroHype.com's review. As a tribute to Fright Flicks of yore, Werewolf by Night feels like effective cosplay. 
As an actual story, it's not so strong. We barely learn anything about Elsa, who deserves better as Marvel's version of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Bernal plays Russell against type with more layers than the script seems to offer, but he doesn't get much else to work with besides atmosphere. If Werewolf by Night really was meant to be a standalone, writers Heather Quinn and Peter Cameron shouldn't have scripted Elsa and Jack as if they're enigmas to be unwrapped in future episodes. Or per RogerEbert.com, it's a script that's lost between a short film and a feature, too overcrowded for the former and too thin for the latter. It's a project that demanded a few more twists or memorable characters to give it more weight. The consensus seems to be that the homage is fun, but that's really all Werewolf by Night has to offer, that we're seeing a classic example of style over substance. Now, the easy response here might be that this isn't a main installment, a TV show or movie, just a special presentation, and therefore that it doesn't need to succeed on the same terms a more high-profile project might, that style instead of substance is enough for a minor, one-off thing like this. But while there's probably some truth here, it is, I think, the less interesting line of thought to take. So how about this one? What happens if we stop thinking in terms of style versus substance? What about style as substance? If the homage is fun, does it matter that it's the main attraction? The validity of style as substance has been argued for plenty in defenses of filmmakers like Wes Anderson, and that shoe surely fits just as well here. This is, after all, an adaptation of Bronze Age, B-movie-derived comic book characters, an adaptation which itself leverages every stylistic trick in the book to evoke those same early images of horror that Man-Thing and Werewolf by Night comics ultimately descended from. From the get-go, Werewolf by Night is so deep in simulacra, so far from reality, so built on style, that one struggles to picture any other source of substance. But even if style is substance, is it substance enough? Stepping back, seeing this not as an isolated project, but as Thing 30-something in an ostensibly still-developing franchise, is an amount of aesthetic flair really that praiseworthy? Well, I think it might be, especially since Werewolf by Night's style doesn't exist as a result of the MCU's already laid foundations, more in spite of them. Let's think about form for a moment. Werewolf by Night is a Marvel Studios special presentation. But what is a Marvel Studios special presentation? Well, it's not a movie, it's not a feature film, but it's not a TV show either, this is just the one episode. The nearest format match is probably the made-for-TV movie, but those tend to be low-budget affairs, and while this may have had a low budget for Marvel standards, it's surely worlds apart from the funding typical for TV movies. And let's not forget, it wasn't made for TV, not really. You might be wondering why the question of the special presentation even matters, but go with me for a moment. Media theorist Marshall McLuhan famously declared the medium is the message, that is, put simply, the scope for what can be delivered within a format matters as much as, if not more than, the details of the message being delivered in that format, just two years after Peter Parker was first bitten, and mere months after the Avengers first formed. McLuhan was a pioneer, one of the 20th century thinkers who'd be the least taken aback, I think, were he to be transported to the present, but all the same, I very much doubt McLuhan expected, upon turning that phrase, that 60 years later some British wanker talking about filmed adaptations of those comic books would bust out that line in defense of a Disney picture, recreating then-worn-out tropes. But I might do that anyway. Now, it would be a stretch, it would be soundbite abuse to take away from McLuhan's phrase the idea that Werewolf by Night is good or should face less scrutiny because it's been designated as a different type of content, but maybe we can take away that medium, form, what a medium or form can offer, and what is gained or lost by changes in form or new forms are deceptively weighty things. Figuring out how the so-called Marvel Studios special presentation fits in with the wider televisual filmic medium is only half the battle, because now, 15 years and tens of projects in, the MCU can well be considered a sort of medium unto itself. 
How Werewolf by Night, how the special presentation fits in there is just as relevant a problem, and this part of it is where we can get to some fairly straightforward conclusions. Regardless of how significant Werewolf by Night's format is in a wider sense, it is kind of innovative within this franchise. Lower budget means lower expectations, which means less spotlight but less pressure too, and it seems the result of this, of the studio giving Michael Giacchino the go-ahead to make a bite-sized, non-tentpole project a Marvel Studios special presentation, was a looser grip and more license to experiment. An idea didn't need to be stretched out to fill either a two-hour window or a six-episode count. It could be as long as it ended up being. It could be in black and white. It could go harder on the horror. It could commit more to this project of homage. And it could eschew ticking all of those audience-widening boxes, because it didn't necessarily need to sell X amount of tickets to be a success. The special presentation is also a nice and accessible supplement to the franchise's cinematic backbone, and as we've seen with that lately released colour version, allows a heretofore unseen degree of iteration or supplementation, but I think the clearest benefit Werewolf by Night draws from this new-ish format is in how it cleared the way for this wholehearted, in MCU terms at least, devotion to style, the devotion that's praised by even the more mixed responses. So not only can we see style as substance, we can also see in the way Werewolf by Night spearheaded the development of the Marvel Studios special presentation, a relative innovation in form which facilitates weirder, less common denominator directed projects, facilitates this devotion to style, permits style to become substance, an innovation which is thus itself somewhat substantive. Now this all happened back in Phase 4, under then-Disney head honcho Bob Chapek's quantity focus, so who knows if or when we'll see another special presentation, but it should be noted that Werewolf by Night not only succeeded, but in a sense built the platform for that success too. Innovation in form, however slight, is still innovation, so even if the homage, if style as substance is all this project has to offer, there is more to praise here than it might at first seem. But I'll admit, I am kind of saying that through gritted teeth. See, with MCU properties, it often feels like there's more discussion, more analysis even, online on what the property means for the franchise at large than there is on the thing itself. That is obviously a valid area to investigate, but the proportion of coverage it gets can feel like we're all sort of missing the trees for the forest. And well, it gets boring, it gets exhausting when a film isn't a film, a show isn't a show, is only content link number 35 on an infinite content chain. And yes, I do see the irony, I recognise I am kind of doing that same thing here, abstracting a discussion of Werewolf by Night out into a discussion of the franchise format, but it's something that especially recently I've been trying to avoid, and I think it kind of has to be done here. I'll be talking more about this, what we might term the content chain problem, in another video soon, but as much as fan discussion tends to lean into it, let's be honest, that leaning in is a largely Pavlovian response. The MCU is a franchise which has historically delighted in stringing viewers along, shoving setup into places where it doesn't quite fit, and avoiding finality at all costs. This continuous nature can be fun, but if everything, even endings, even seemingly standalone beginnings, must double as overarching franchise fodder, must further that chain, when do we get to the payoff? This is the curse of the cinematic universe. If everything is connected, if everything drives growth, then these aren't stories but chapters. And chapters are cool, but so are stories. With startlingly few exceptions, see Guardians Volume 3, that is the MCU. But all that being said, I actually really like the way Werewolf by Night slots into this pattern. And maybe this is with the benefit of hindsight. This is influenced by the Disney Plus strategy changes we've heard about recently. The fact that we might not be seeing any of these characters again anytime soon. Although, truth be told, I never really got the vibe that this was a project aiming to set Elsa and Jack up for other appearances, but what I see here is a self-contained story, one that's well shot, well paced, and drips with style, whose contribution to franchise growth is one of form. Werewolf by Night is still burdened by that task of building forward, but here that building doesn't impinge on the experience of watching the film, of connecting, albeit relatively briefly, with its characters and delighting in its vibe. 
And that seems to me a pretty good compromise. One year on though, Werewolf by Night doesn't seem to come up a great deal in fan discussion. The freedom afforded by that special presentation label has come back to bite. With discussions of the post-Endgame era tending to focus on the mainline films and shows, Werewolf by Night's altered format has led it to slip through the cracks. But I do think, like the Hawkeye show perhaps, Werewolf by Night may well go on to develop a second life of sorts as a seasonal rewatch. And I hope it does. I think it deserves it. There's success in that vibe, in the pursuit of style, and in the format. Not so much in the fact that this inaugurated the Marvel Studios special presentation, whatever that is, but in the way Werewolf by Night negotiates that inauguration. Not the fact that it created new opportunities, but what it did with those. Perhaps, as some critics noted, Werewolf by Night should have pushed that homage, that pursuit of pure style, further still. Practical Man-Thing, Practical Bloodstone, less Black Widowing. Maybe that would have led to an unambiguous, no asterisk necessary success, to lasting adoration from critics and fans alike. That feels like the safe note to end on, the logical extension of that critical consensus. But that's not really how I want to end this video. Like I said a while back, I'm not really on board with that consensus. Yes, a good chunk of the substance here is style, but no, I don't think that's all of it. The score is great because it channels that familiar heightened horror atmosphere, but it's also well written in its own right. Jack's werewolf form is playfully evocative of yesterday's monster films, but it is also just a good design. People are the real monsters might be a well-worn moral within this genre, but the way it's drawn forward from a theme into a twist is hugely entertaining. Things like this, things like the anxious, paranoid air we open with, the feeling of being somewhere you're not supposed to be, and the not quite happy but relieved ending, the return of the colour to Elsa and Jack's worlds, things like this that begin in homage but become things unto themselves, make boiling all this down to style versus substance, or style as substance, feel reductive. So maybe seeing, enjoying, more than the style here does put me in the minority, but so what? It's not a once in a generation triumph or anything, but it's good and I like it. It's a very worthy first directorial credit for the infuriatingly talented Giacchino, and especially after watching the Director by Night documentary Marvel put out on Disney Plus shortly after the special, which makes the care and ambition here impossible to miss. Up into. Yeah. Here, right? the eyes are what is it with you and monsters? I was always into the fantastical. You feel privileged to sit in on the culmination of that journey. There, that's how I want to end this video. I know I always say it, but I would really be interested in hearing how you guys feel about Werewolf by Night down below, and whether or not that opinion's changed since it came out. Making this video was a bit of a spur-of-the-moment decision, so I've kind of touched base with fan opinion less than I tend to with these retrospectives. Otherwise, make sure to like and subscribe or I'll transform into a beast and rip your face off, and huge thank you as always to all my supporters on Patreon and YouTube. Great to see some new signups recently, by the way. Above all, Daniel Goldhorn, Karen Kuhlman, Magath, Ryan Emily, Something Something Capitalism Bad, Thomas R, and Weirdy Beardy. See you soon.